Alhamdulillah, Hirabil Alameen, was Sallallahu was Sallam and Nabi and Muhammad, while Ali was Sahbihi was Sallam and Mabad. Ahabatifillah, this is the second sitting of our study of Kawa'id al Arba, and we mentioned that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahmatullah, he said. With regards, he began his treaties with the, the dua. He said, I ask Allah the most generous, the Lord of the mighty throne, to protect you in this life as well as the hereafter, to bless you wherever you are, and make you from those people who, if they are given, they become thankful. If they are tested, they are patient. And when they sin, they seek forgiveness. For those are three signs of happiness. al alama Ahmed Al-Najmi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he commented, on the above by saying, whoever is protected by Allah in this life, as well as the hereafter, has triumphed and achieved success and attained the highest level. Allah has bestowed upon him paradise and whosoever enters it will live and not die, be healthy and not ill, be youthful and not elderly. And may Allah bless us all with Jannah to Firdaus, Ameen, and our families, Ameen, with the guidance, and with Jannah to Firdaus, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. From the manners of the Salaf and the best of the teachers, the Prophet Wasallam, we observe that the Shaykh began with the supplication for the readers, as we mentioned already. This shows his concern, his gentleness, and it opens the heart of the reader or listener to what is being conveyed. Allah protects his servants in this life as well as the next by supporting them and giving them guidance. Allah says, Verily, Allah is the guide of those who believe to the straight path. And Allah, the Almighty, also states, Your Lord is sufficient as a guide and supporter. Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr Hafidullah Ta'ala said, The guider is the one who guides his slaves, shows them, directs them to that which will bring them happiness in their life as well as the hereafter. Through his guidance, he directs those he has given authority to obedience to him and his pleasure. And he guides the animals to those things which benefit them and away from harm. So it shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is al-hadi. He gives us guidance. And this is a ni'mah, a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he gives us guidance and he provides for even the animals. And something that came up as a question with regards to speaking about our ni'mah, speaking about our, our blessings and favors to Allah. You want to have a balance with regards to this issue, meaning not being excessive. For example, if someone's going to speak about the blessings of having a, a good job, they can say, Alhamdulillah, Allah has favored me with a good job. What a great ni'mah and blessing. Not with the intention of making people jealous, but sometimes people are going to be jealous. But you do not want to stop talking about the ni'mah and the ni'amillah when Allah has commanded us to speak about those blessings, as we said, فحدث, that Allah has, has commanded us to speak about His, His blessings, His favors upon us. Alhamdulillah, Allah favored us to get up and, and see another day to praise Him. Alhamdulillah, Allah has favored me with my health and my family and security, to live in a place of security and peace. So, this is not something, uh, this is speaking about the blessings and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this is not a way of publishing your blessings and opening up for the shaitan or opening up for people who are envious. People who are envious, they're going to be envy. You don't want to be proud and so forth, but you do want to speak about those favors that Allah has favored you with in a humble fashion. And the point of this is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Shaykh mentioned these three types of guidance that Allah gives His creatures. The general guidance for all of creation to distinguish what is good and beneficial from harm. So this is the first type of guidance. The second type of guidance is clarity and evidence-based. As Allah does not punish His servants without giving them evidence to determine good from evil and faith from disbelief. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust to disbelievers. Those who did not uh, receive guidance of Islam at all. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best judge and he knows his servants and those who never had the opportunity to receive the message of, of Islam after the the advent of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then they will be tested. Allah knows their heart and knows if they would have believed or not and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Hakim and he is al-Adl, he's the most just and he's the most wise in his hikmah and he is that way with his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala the third type of guidance involves a person being successful by accepting guidance, and this is from Allah's blessings. So there's three types of guidance we mentioned. The first type is the guidance that Allah gives all of His creatures. And this is general uh, guidance uh, from, for all the creation, to so that way they can discern good from evil. And the second type of guidance is the kind that's clear, that involves clarity and is based on evidence, uh, you know, showing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish His servants without giving them, making a hujjah. And the third type of guidance involves a person being successful by accepting the guidance, by accepting Islam, by accepting the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following it. Uh, if Allah protects you in this life, He makes it easy for you to gain correct knowledge taken from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and graces you with righteous actions by practicing that knowledge. If He protects you in the hereafter, then He has kept you away from the hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ يَرِدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقُوا فِي الدِّينَ Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he grants him understanding of the knowledge. So this shows us that understanding uh, the understanding of Islam and beneficial knowledge is a sign that Allah loves his servant and wants good for him or her. Because proper sound knowledge assists him or her in doing good deeds and having wisdom, having hikmah. Ignorance leads to stagnancy in practice. In, in your practice and a lack of understanding of religious verdicts and practices and your creed meaning Tawheed and, and Aqidah and the Salaf of this Ummah the pious predecessors used to refer to knowledge seekers as the seekers of paradise the Salaf uh, a well known statement from the Salaf was Talib al-ilm Talib al-Jannah that the seeker of knowledge is the seeker of Jannah because it takes sincerity to really seek knowledge I'm not talking about just reading and studying books and memorizing and this or because you want a station because you want a high salary because you want status from the people no those those reasons of seeking knowledge can perhaps at times lead you to the hellfire they can do the exact opposite but if you seek the knowledge strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come closer to Allah to remove the ignorance from yourself and then ignorance from your community, then this will be a source of success for you. If Allah protects you in this life, then you are protected from trials and excessive tribulations and involving yourself in things that do not concern you and fitna. And it means you receive the blessings of guidance until you die. And may Allah guide us all. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. A person can only have blessings whenever he or she is sitting with good people and surrounding themselves with righteousness. Sheikh Abdul Razak mentioned that Ibn al-Qayyim said, a person can only be blessed wherever he is if wherever he goes, he leaves benefit and the people around him. Or he leaves benefit with the people around him. So that means when someone is really blessed, they're going to leave benefit with you. And likewise, you want to be in the company of those people who are blessed, who leave benefit with you and leave benefit with the people. Don't sit in gatherings where the people are, uh, you know, backbiting and, and have nothing good to offer. But instead, sit with those and sit in good company and seek knowledge and do those things which will be uh, beneficial. And with regards to being patient, as uh, being patient, as we already mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ said, are, are, are about sinfulness, and this has to do with uh, obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and being patient, and that all of us, the fact that we all are sinners, all the children of Adam commit sin, and the best of those uh, who sin are those who repent. That's a characteristic of the believers that they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not being arrogant. And 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah Al-Asr, by the time verily mankind is in a loss, except those who have faith, do righteous deeds, invite to the truth, and possess patience. Be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions, be patient. Verily Allah is with those who are patient. And being grateful. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I am amazed at the affair of the believer. All of his affairs are good. This is not the case of anyone except the believer. If things become easy for him, he is grateful, and this is better for him. And if harm afflicts him, he is patient, and this is better for him. This is the case of the believer. Imam, uh, then Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, alayhi, he said, uh, after making the dua, and saying, فَإِنَّ هَوْلَاءِ ثَلَاثَ عُنْوَاءَ سَعَادَةَ He said, that the beginning, he said, أَنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ مُخْلِسٍ لَهُ الدِّينِ وَبِذَلِكَ أَمْرَ اللَّهِ جَمِيعَ النَّاسِ وَخَلَقُهُمْ لَهَا كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنِ وَالْإِنْتِ لَلِيَعْبُدُونَ And then the Shaykh said, that, no, may Allah guide you to obeying, obeying him. Again, making dua for us. That Hanafiya is the religion of Ibrahim. And then he defined what uh, this religion, Hanafiya, is. It is worshiping Allah alone and making the religion purely for him. Likewise, Allah commanded all of mankind and created them to worship him. And Allah says, I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi said, This is the worship which is considered real worship. And the person who performs it will receive reward and an abundance of good. As for the person who mixes worship, Worshipping Allah and other than Him, then this is not considered worshipping Allah. As it is mentioned in the hadith narrated on the Prophet وسلم, who narrated on his Lord, Allah the Almighty said, I am the most self-sufficient, free from shirk. Whoever does a deed and associates a partner with me, or other than me, then I have left him and his shirk. So shirk destroys your deeds. Shaykh Ibrahim al-Rahili Allah Ta'ala states Obedience to Allah is of two types Being obedient to his commands And obedient by avoiding what Allah has prohibited So that's two types of obedience the Shaykh mentioned Obedience to Allah in his commands And obedience by avoiding that which he is prohibited And we already mentioned that as a type of patience A sabr ala ta'atillah wa sabr ala ma'asiyatillah Patience in obedience to Allah and, and patience in refraining from sin. Allah created the slaves to worship Him and He promised them forgiveness and paradise. Like what was mentioned in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqallah ala ibadi wa ma haqallah ibadi ala Allah. Kultu Allah wa Rasulu wa alam. Kala haqa Allah li ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la tushriku bi shayin. Wa haqa li ibadi ala Allah an la yu'adhaba man la yushriku bi shayin. In the hadith of Mu'adh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Mu'adh were riding on a donkey together, showing us the humbleness of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. And he said, O oh, Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah over, uh, over his servant and the servant's right over Allah? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of Allah over his slaves is that they worship him and do not ascribe partners to him. And the right of his slaves over him is that they will not be punished if they do not ascribe partners to him. Then I said, O Messenger of Allah, should I tell the people? He said, do not tell them because they will depend upon that meaning they will refrain from doing good deeds. The fact that they won't be punished if they actualize Tawheed. Perfect Tawheed, this person will not be uh, punished. But it's very hard to get pro, uh, to achieve that, to haqqaq Tawheed, kamil, without any uh, naqs. And with regards to that, uh, Regarding the, the verse, 
that we mentioned Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi he commented about this verse he said in this verse is evidence that the purpose behind creating men and jinn is that Allah tests them with his commands and prohibitions and other things which turn them away from obedience to Allah the Almighty so Allah tests us he gives us this test therefore whoever is affected by things that turn him away from Allah and abandons worship then he is one of the losers. And whoever takes from this worldly life and uses it to fulfill his purpose, then he is one of those who are successful. So that's how you can gain success, is a worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And again, showing us the importance of what? The importance of Tawheed. The importance of studying Tawheed. The importance of actualizing Tawheed. Practicing Tawheed. If a servant is dutiful in worship, his path and provisions are made easy and he will be blessed in all of his affairs and be protected in every way by Allah. Like in the hadith of Ibn Abbas عنه, who said, عنهما, guard Allah's commandments and he will protect you. The scholars mention that statement is full of meaning and that whoever guards his religion and worship, Allah will protect him in all of his affairs. And since it is time for the prayer now, we'll stop there and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.